So I'm gonna go over Watergate today. I'm officially cruising for a bruising and fixin' for a nixin. Anyway, hello again and welcome back to the channel and random events in history. Today we're going to go over the huge set of events starting on June 17, 1972, aka the Watergate Scandal. Let's begin. Back in 1972, there was a group called the Committee to Re-Elect the President, or more commonly referred to as Creep nowadays. The group, as their name states, were created to help get acting President Richard Milhouse Nixon re-elected, and it seems they were willing to do just about anything to make that happen. May 1972 is when Creep initially stole copies of secret documents and taped the offices at the Democratic National Committee's headquarters in the Watergate Hotel. But it's when they returned on June 17, 1972, to fix the wiretaps that they were caught. However, Nixon swore that he and the White House staff were not involved, and in November, he was re-elected in one of the most one-sided races in political history. For a short while, that was it. But eventually, people started to question the president's said lack of involvement, especially after a trail of so-called hush money to keep those involved quiet was discovered. Things only escalated from there when it came to light that President Nixon taped all of his conversations in the Oval Office. And when the tapes were subpoenaed or requested to be released, Nixon firmly refused. Things went further with the events of October 20th, 1973, also known as the Saturday Night Massacre, when the president commanded the attorney general and his deputy to fire the one subpoenaing the tape. And after refusing, they resigned. Afterwards, he then turned to Solicitor General Robert Bork, who went through with his order and considered resigning himself. It was on March 1st, 1974, when Nixon was named an official, unindicted co-conspirator, and things began to fall apart. Transcripts were released from the tapes on April 29th, 1974, and while initially Nixon was supported, the support quickly vanished as the transcripts were read, and more and more called for his resignation. Putting a halt on things for a minute, it's worth mentioning that one of the tapes released had 18 and a half minutes of audio erased. While his personal security claimed it was an accident, it seems really, really unlikely. So the real question is, if those 18 and a half minutes were intentionally deleted, taking into account what he didn't remove was more than enough to have him impeached, what could have been so bad that he felt the need to delete it? we probably will never know. Moving on, the tape released on August 5th, 1974 was the smoking gun against the president. The tape, taken just a few days after June 17th, 1972, contained entire conversations connecting Nixon to the cover-up and the obstruction of justice in the investigation. For Nixon, the jig was up. Nixon had been caught lying to the nation and all his closest aides for two years. Politically, this destroyed all remaining support for Nixon, and knowing an impeachment trial was on his way, on August 8, 1974, President Richard Nixon resigned from office and Vice President General Ford was sworn in. To add one last bit of controversy, a month later, President Ford issued a full, unconditional pardon on Nixon, immunizing him from any prosecution for his crimes. Despite this, Nixon proclaimed his innocence up until his death in 1994. The Watergate scandal rocked the nation to its very core and dramatically shook up support for government officials that to this day has not been entirely restored. Watergate will forever be known as the biggest presidential scandal in history and will be remembered forever. Man, I could talk about Watergate and Nixon for hours. But thank you for watching, and thanks for the support. Let me know if you have any suggestions, as I'm always open. 
Thanks again, have a good night, and see you again for another random event in history.